Thailand. Hi, I'm Lisa, and there's a threshold in China, a segment that gives you a taste of the future before it actually happens. I'm going to talk about emerging technologies that have life-changing potential and assess their ability to influence our life in the near future. I don't know if you've seen this on TikTok or not, there's a video that says China launched an artificial sun in the sky. What happened? Well, China is indeed experimenting with artificial suns. Yes, that's plural. They are testing two different artificial sun prototypes and are simultaneously participating in a multinational research program. Just to give you an idea on the scale of the artificial suns, the one in Hefei, its core components weighs 400 tons, and its facility covers an area of three square kilometers, that's roughly 420 football fields. The suns, however, are not intended to be launched into the sky. The so-called artificial sun is a new type of nuclear power plant, to be more specific, a controllable nuclear fusion facility. Nuclear fusion is hailed as the ultimate energy source. Unlike fossil fuel, which will someday eventually run out, not to mention its impact on climate change, this source of energy is practically unlimited. Just think about the sun that's in the sky. It's burning at 6,000 degrees Celsius on the surface and 50 million degrees Celsius at its core, and it stays that way forever. What if we can have a sun that provides endless energy? Well, let's think about it. The sun is using nuclear power. But how is it different from the conventional nuclear plants? Most of the nuclear plants rely on nuclear fission, whereas the sun generates energy through nuclear fusion. Hence, why we call fusion reactors artificial sun. So, fusion and fission, what's the difference? The first thing to know is that atoms with the same number of protons and different number of neutrons are called isotopes. Fission takes place when large and somewhat unstable isotope is bombarded by high-speed particles, usually neutrons. These neutrons are accelerated and then slammed into the unstable isotope. This clash causes the isotope to fission, or to break down into smaller particles. This splits the nucleus and breaks it down into smaller isotopes and produces a large amount of energy. These high-speed neutrons that are ejected become projectiles that initiate other fission reactions, so there's a chain reaction. This resulting energy heats water in nuclear reactors, and the steam of this water propels turbines, which ultimately produce electricity. To summarize, in nuclear fission, an atom splits into smaller particles. On the other hand, fusion takes place when two low-mass isotopes merge together. Typically, it's isotopes of hydrogen, which merge under conditions of extreme pressure and temperature to produce neutron and a helium isotope. This resulting fusion reaction produces several times the amount of energy produced by fission. Unlike uranium-235, which is a rare material, there is a lot of hydrogen isotopes in the ocean. For every one liter of seawater, hydrogen isotope extracted from that can produce the amount of energy equivalent to 300 liters of gasoline. It's also more environmentally friendly and safer as compared to fission. Fusion reactions produce almost no radioactive waste, and this reactor cannot sustain a chain reaction, so they can never melt down like fusion reactors. It's all nice and simple in a theory, but to build artificial sun on Earth, there are two major challenges that scientists and engineers have to overcome. First, it's how to reach 100 million degrees Celsius, that's almost six times the temperature of the sun's inner core, to trigger this fusion reaction. The scientists decided to use a 34 megawatts microwave device that's like saying turning on 68,000 microwaves oven at the same time. But the problem is the best heat resistant material on Earth melts down at about 3,000 degrees. So where to put this giant ball of fire? Well, they created a powerful magnetic field to contain it. Because under the influence of extreme heat and pressure, gasoline hydrogen fuel becomes a plasma. That's a hot, electrically charged gas. In this donut-shaped vacuum chamber, otherwise known as tokamak device, scientists build a cage or magnetic field to contain the plasma. Its charged particles can be shaped and controlled by massive magnetic coils placed around the vessel. They use this important property to confine the hot plasma away from the vessel wall. The coils in the Hefei facility can produce a magnetic field 70,000 times stronger than that of the Earth. To create such a huge magnetic field, it requires a current of over 12,000 amperes, thousands of times of what an air conditioner would need. And the wires bringing the current must operate on the minus 269 degrees. So let's remember that's right next to the 100 million degree plasma, and there's about one meter separating the two worlds of ice and fire. 
Now on to problem number two. Once the temperature reached 100 million degrees, how do you maintain it so that fusion works continuously like the sun? The issue here is that the current of 12,000 amperes runs through the tokamak device. It generates an enormous amount of heat because of the electrical resistance of it and the material. And as we want the machine to run continuously, the heat may eventually melt the device. So the scientists manage this by using superconductive materials. Their electrical resistance is close to zero, and this made longer continuous fusion possible. And of course, a better cooling system also helps. As of December of 2021, China's experimental advanced superconducting tokamak East has set the record of continuously operating for 1,056 seconds. I know that doesn't sound very much, but it's a major step to the future application of this device. The chief scientist, Dr. Peng Xianjie of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, is optimistic that it can start to provide electricity by 2028. It is actually quite an ambitious goal, but if they achieved it, then the artificial sun is probably only 50 years away from us. Now, how good is it according to the standards of this threshold rating? That is readiness, novelty, and potential impact or rippleness. In the readiness category, it is a two. Having the fusion last for 1056 seconds is impressive, but it's still a long way to go before we can rely on it for our daily energy consumption. As to the novelty criteria, although the tokamak design itself is not really new, it was initially conceived and built by Soviet scientists in the 1958, bringing ideas from paper to reality and also constantly improving it and innovating, it is a 3. And finally, the ripples rating. I mean, just think about the possibility of having unlimited energy that's also environmentally friendly. It probably will be the biggest achievement in human history. It is a 5. So there we go, two, three, and five. Just one step away from meeting the threshold of real world influence. Let's just quickly compare with other sources of energy. Like we said before, unlike oil and gas, it's fuel, seawater, it's super abundant and low carbon. Unlike solar panels, it doesn't require expensive and highly polluting rare earth elements. Unlike hydropower that needs dams, it can practically be built anywhere and it uses far less land for every unit of energy produced as compared to wind or solar farms. If it can be realized and scaled in an economical way, fusion power has the potential to bring about a radical industrial revolution. What do you think will happen when human has harnessed the power of the sun? As usual, we look forward to hearing your feedback and imagination.